everybody and welcome back to my channel. For those of you new here, hello, my name is Skylar. I am a certified dog trainer and pet nutritionist. As you can see, we're getting a little festive here at the house and that means, you know, family coming over and changes in routine and lots of fun, exciting things for us people. But, you know, managing the dogs in those situations can be a little tricky. So today we're gonna to be going over five easy ways to keep your dogs occupied, make sure you're meeting their needs and helping your holiday season go as smooth as possible while utilizing enrichment. Enrichment is something that's used to help stimulate your dog mentally. This could be things like sniffing or shredding or licking or chewing or digging or any of those things that dogs naturally do because they're dogs. All these things help to relieve stress, relieve boredom, help to keep your dogs occupied, makes them more active learners, which is super important for training, makes them more engaged and confident in their environment, and gives you a break to wrap gifts, visit with family, give them something to do while all of the cousins are over, whatever the case may be. There are a million and one ways to add enrichment to your pet's life. Today we're gonna be focusing on five different easy ways using toys or things that you have around the house to help meet your dog's needs. And we'll also talk a little bit about how that actually benefits them and why it works. Did you know that about 10 minutes of mental exercise can tire your dog out as much as a 60 minute walk? This is something I love sharing with my clients whenever we're working in a training scenario because in training, we do 45 minutes to an hour of mental exercise. And afterwards, I always like to warn them that their dog's gonna take a real good nap. And nine times out of 10, I am totally correct. Next time I go to the class, they let me know that their dog slept for hours after we were done training. And while taking that big chunk of time for a training session is beneficial in teaching new behaviors, you don't need to be that involved in order to have those needs met. In order to meet the needs of an average adult dog, they need about 16 hours of sleep typically, only 30 minutes a day of active exercise. This is things like running, jumping, playing, really getting that high energy activity out. And an hour of more passive exercise, mental enrichment especially. This is things like sniffing and licking and chewing and digging and all of those super fun dog things that we're really gonna tap into today. We do have a sponsor for today's video, so we will be using a number of different products from the Bark Box and Super Tour Box Season Sweeting December collection in order to kind of express different ways that we can meet our dog's needs this holiday season. I've been a huge fan of BarkBox for years and years and years. My dog Tiki has been getting a monthly BarkBox subscription for the past five or six years. All of their stuff is super high quality, high quality ingredients, high quality toys, and really just a joy to have shipped to the door every single month. I'm always really, really excited to see what kind of theme they have going on. So I really, really appreciate that about BarkBox. BarkBox is a monthly subscription service that sends high quality toys and treats directly to your door. They have both a traditional BarkBox and a super tour box. So whether you have a more mellow and chill dog like my dog Tiki, or your dogs are a little bit tougher on their toys like my dogs Luna and Misty, they do have options for both to make sure that they're able to meet your dog's needs. All of BarkBox toys are made exclusively for BarkBox in-house, which means you get some of the cutest and most creative toys that I personally have ever seen. BarkBox has a couple different subscription options. You can get a 12 month, a six month, or just a one month plan. I personally will do the 12 month plan and we renew it every Christmas. So that way for Christmas, my dog gets an extra year of BarkBox, which is always super fun throughout the year. And if you sign up for BarkBox using my link, you get double the goodies in your first box. Double the toys, double the treats, double the fun, which makes it extra special if you're wanting to give it as a gift this year. Thank you again to BarkBox for sponsoring today's video. And now let's get on into it. Our very first enrichment activity is treat toys. These are treat balls or treat dispensing toys that your dog has to actually work for a little bit in order to get the treats out. And here I have the gummy chews from the Super Chewer box. Treat toys are one of the simplest enrichment opportunities because for a lot of people, it takes the guesswork and creativity out of the mix. So all you have to do is pick up the toy, fill it with treats, hand it to your dog, and let them have some fun with it. Treat toys are really great because it is a food incentive activity. So dogs that aren't super interested in just playing with their toys might have a little extra incentive to give these ones a shot because they do have that nice smell of treats. 
The trick with any enrichment, but especially these treat toys, is to make sure that the activity is fun and not frustrating for your dog. As they get better and better, it's going to become a little bit easier for them to get to the treats, but we want to make sure that we meet them where they're at so it's not a frustrating experience. It truly is fun. Making sure that your dog is able to be successful is going to be really, really key for this. Not only do treat toys help to keep your dog engaged with the toy because it does have that treat aspect, but it teaches active problem solving, which is really, really great, especially if you're actively training and working on new skills. We always want an active learner when we're training our dogs. The more they have to kind of piece together what we're asking for and have the skills to do so, the easier it's going to be to train them in the long run. I really love all the different treats that are included in the Bark Box and Super Chewer boxes. They're high quality, they use real ingredients. So by taking some of these treats, tearing them up into little pieces, and sticking them in this little X here, the whole red chamber is an empty chamber to hold treats. As your dog bats this around and plays with it, treats will fall out of this X here, and that helps to keep them engaged. It helps to make sure there's frequent rewards so your dog's not getting too frustrated. And honestly, I'm super excited about this little gumdrop toy. Our next enrichment activity is shredding. Shredding is a totally normal activity that a lot of dogs find really, really fun. And I know as a person, as a human, as a dog parent, it can be pretty frustrating when you have all of these nice toys and your dog just wants to shred them. But that's actually one of the things that I love about the Bark Box toys and the Super Chewer toys. This gingerbread man is from the Super Chewer box. And what they do with a lot of their toys is they put a toy within a toy. So once it is shredded, you still have something fun to play with. So this is a cute little gingerbread man. He is a little on the floppy side, which my husky especially loves and adores. She loves having something kind of floppy that she can grab onto, throw it around with. Inevitably, once she's done throwing it around and having all sorts of fun that way, she loves to shred. These toys are pretty tough. It takes longer to shred than a lot of the other toys that we have. And then once this skin is gone, there is a little ball, a little rubber ball on the inside for you to play with as well. So you still can keep the fun going. We had a chestnut, a chestnut roasting on an open fire toy from last Christmas, maybe even two Christmases ago that came in a bark box. And she just took the top layer of that chestnut toy off. And it was a little chestnut with a smiley face. Underneath it was another little fabric chestnut with a ball on the side. I need a frowny face. I always really love these toys because, you know, they're made to be shredded. They know that your dog's gonna eventually destroy this toy and get to the inside. And so they make it fun for not only your dog, because there's still another toy in there, but it makes it really fun for me because oftentimes they do hide something cute underneath that initial layer. If you want to give your dog another outlet for all their shredding behaviors, but don't necessarily want to have it all taken out on the toys, the Bark Box boxes are honestly some of my favorite toys. Once we take all the treats and toys out and those have been played with, I'll usually throw a couple treats into the empty box itself, close it up, and let my dogs tear those apart. This is really helpful for me because I don't have to break down the cardboard boxes and my dogs absolutely love tearing these boxes apart. Per side, so it is a challenge to get into. And with this, you just want to make sure that your dog isn't ingesting any of the cardboard and then you pick it all up afterward. Our next enrichment option is a play off of another food toy, but it could also be great if you have a dog that loves new smells, or if you have a small dog that likes to dig and burrow. This little Coco & Co. like hot chocolate toy is super, super cute, and the marshmallow comes out. So it's two toys in one, but the part that I really, really like, and they do this a lot with their toys, since it is a two-in-one, you can stick treats in here, you can stick a smelly sock in here. You can stick you know, another toy in here and put the marshmallow on top. Even just having the marshmallow in there would be pretty dang fun for a lot of dogs. This again helps with problem solving. If you put something in there, they have to figure out that the marshmallow comes out to get to whatever's in there. Scent can be one of those enrichment needs that's a little bit tougher to activate and to allow your dog lots of activity for when in the house. If you're outside going on safari walks, is perfect and excellent and one of my favorites, just letting them kind of guide the walk and sniff at their own rate. But if you're inside, if you have family over and your dog just really loves smells, it can be a little bit tougher. So what I like to recommend to people, especially for people that have a big toy collection, that maybe their dog's really good with their toys. They don't destroy them. That's my older dog Tiki for you in a nutshell. He has so many bark box toys at this point. What I recommend doing is finding a friend that also has a stash swapping toys, making sure that they're like 
clean enough to give to a friend, but leaving a lot of those smells in there. And not only do you have new toys for your dog, new toys for their dog, but you also get a lot of naturally occurring smells that your dog might not be super familiar with, which is a super, super great opportunity. Just let them go ham, smell everything, take in some new information, and really meet those sniffing needs. Our next enrichment option is chewing. If your dog is a big chewer, giving them outlets for that that is not your antique furniture, it's gonna be really, really important for your sanity and to be able to meet those needs for them. Chewing is something totally normal and natural for dogs. It's a natural stress reliever and boredom buster. A couple different food options and toy options that you can use to help meet your dog's chewing needs. If your dog is maybe not the strongest chewer, but an avid chewer, maybe they're older, they don't have as many teeth, or they just don't have that strong of a jaw, treats like these that are included in BarkBox I really, really enjoy. They aren't the strongest of toys in the world. My lab and my husky can get through them pretty quickly, but I do really, really love these. If you have the West Paw Quizzles, these fit in there really well, which helps them last a lot longer and add an extra element of puzzle. These also would totally fit in like the X on this gumdrop or the little X on this Christmas tree toy. So you can always stick it in there and make it a little bit harder for your bigger dogs to get through. That's gonna make them last a lot longer. But if you have a gentler chewer, these are really, really great. Another option is a chew toy like the peppermint candy cane from the Super Chewer box. When you're looking for chew toys like these, I typically try to stay away from the flavored ones. If you wanted this to have some kind of flavor to it to attract your dog that's maybe not super interested, you can smear some peanut butter or something on it. But I personally find that the flavored rubbers especially if you have dogs that'll just chow down anything resembling food, like my lab, can be a little bit more hazardous because it's essentially flavored plastic that's kind of intended to be eaten, um, and I'm not super into that. I always recommend, especially if you have a dog that has inappropriate chewing behaviors, they don't always chew on the best items in the house, for every one thing you do not want them to chew on, you should have at least two that they can chew on within arm's reach. That way, ideally, you can interrupt the behavior before it even starts, give them something better to chew on, and if you catch them in the act, just redirecting them onto something that's way more fun, playing with them for a couple of minutes with it, that way it's not just something that gets shoved in their mouth and moves, it's just, it becomes a fun toy that they want to engage with, is gonna really, really help. Last but not least, the probably simplest of all of these enrichment options is to take treats or your pet's food and just sprinkle it around the house or yard. If you have a yard with grass, you can take their food or you can take some treats and sprinkle it in the grass and have them hunt for it. This helps to engage their smelling senses, it helps the problem solving, and it takes a while. It's one of the best slow feeding options I personally have ever come across. So if you ever need a slow feeder and you wanna turn it into a little bit more of a game, this is a great way to do it. If you don't have a yard or if you don't have grass, that's totally fine. You can sprinkle them around the house. One of the games that I play with my dog is I'll take plastic cups and I'll put treats under some of the plastic cups and they have to go around the house knocking them over to figure out which one has treats or food underneath. You can put treats in an old towel or blanket and wrap it around and tie it in a knot and have your dogs get the treats out that way. There's a ton of fun and clever ways in order to help your dogs problem solve, sniff out those treats, keep them busy while all of your festivities are going on. And like I said earlier, keep a hold of those bark box boxes because I love putting treats in them and having my dogs go crazy trying to get the treats out. That's one of my favorite kind of DIY recycling hacks when it comes to dogs and enrichment. I hope you enjoyed today's video and I hope you learned something about enrichment and different opportunities that you can take not only in the holiday season but through the, the whole year. Enrichment's one of those things that you don't realize how much it affects the behavior of your dog and kind of the flow of your house and routine until you get a good routine going where your dog's needs are being met and they are a little bit more independent because they have all of these options to keep them entertained. If you are interested in any of the toys that you saw in today's video or for signing up for BarkBox subscription yourself. Again, be sure to use the link either in my description or in the pinned comment below. That link will get you a double box, double the treats and double the toys for your very first box. And again, 
great holiday presents. That's how we got started with BarkBox. It's been five or six years and I still love them and have so much fun with them and look forward to it every single month. I hope you all have a happy holiday season and I will see you in the next video. Bye!